Many unfortunate family disagreements can be avoided by simply planning ahead. Whether we're talking about advanced directives, power of attorney, or naming a health care agent, <laughs> taking steps to make our wishes known can make a difficult time easier on our families. Here to talk about some of these documents and terminology is attorney Joseph Bowles with the law firm of Bowles & Bowles. Joseph, thanks for being here. Great to be here. Thanks. Well, let's talk about some of these terminology before we get into this. We hear about power of attorney, agent, even the term surrogate. Um, are these interchangeable? Let's get us started on that before we go into the nitty gritty. Sure. Um, I guess we'll start with with uh, the term principal. The principal is the person who is giving a power to someone else, okay. uh, either a financial power or a medical decision-making power. Uh, and then the terms uh, agent and surrogate, which are used in these documents, are, are typically in interchangeable. The agent or the surrogate is someone who is uh, acting or working for you. Uh, and basically kind of taking your place in, in either medical decision-making or financial uh, transactions. Okay, so that's the person either making the decision or carrying out what you have already right. made clear that that's what you would want. Okay, so let's start with the power of an attorney. Um, how, do, how do you select an agent? Um, a power of attorney is a, is, it's a uh, document that you, that you create to allow someone to make specific uh, specific legal or financial decisions or transactions for you. And it's really best to find someone, either a family member that you trust, uh, a good friend that you trust, or a professional that you trust. The most important thing is that with a, with a power of attorney is that uh, you're, you're granting a, a power to someone that's basically like giving them a blank checkbook with your signature on it. And so you need, it's important important to have, but you need to know that the person will act in your best interest. Can you have more than one? Would that solve any, you know, checks and balances, yeah, so to speak? Yeah, it, it, it can be a very good tool to have to have uh, two powers of attorney. The, the only issue can be if they don't want to work together. So it's like anything else. The more people you add, uh, you've got checks and balances, but things can potentially move slower. They can come to a grinding halt if one person is unable to act. Okay. So what is their obligation to the principal, and how is that obligation um, ensured that it, it happens? They have a very, very strict legal duty to only act in the best interest of the principal, the, the grantor of the power. Mm -hmm. And there can be severe legal consequences if they do not. They need to keep very good records. They need to make sure they don't intermingle or mix the the mm -hmm. accounts or property with their own property and they need to be able to upon request give a full accounting of their actions mm -hmm. and uh, you know show where the money is. So just because someone has planned ahead as we're talking about uh, they can still do them things things themselves until a period of time exactly. where, where they can't. Uh, uh, is that correct? A common misconception is that by granting a power of attorney you're giving up something you're giving up your own rights, and that is not the case. Uh, when you grant a power of attorney uh, and give an agent that power, you still maintain that power ultimately, and you can, uh, they cannot act if you tell them not to. Mm -hmm. So you've, you've lost nothing, you've just given someone else the ability to do it as well. You can create a safety net for yourself right. and, and your family members. Um, well, we're talking about, you know, checkbooks and things like that. Well, let's talk about the health care component and the advanced directives. Tell us a little bit about what advanced directives are. Uh, an advanced directive is basically a document that consists of two parts, a living will, uh, which uh, is where you lay out your end-of-life decisions, and a health care power of attorney, which is in some ways similar to a power of attorney, except it's allowing someone to make medical decisions for you if you're unable to. Mm -hmm. um, should you go through that same process about, you know, thinking about who is the most or the best person right, to take that on? Yes, it's very common to have a different person. You know, I have a lot of clients who have a uh, very uh, financially savvy individual as their power of attorney and then uh, a, a nurse who's in the family or someone who is very compassionate to help them with their, 
with their medical uh, power of attorney. Mm -hmm. Like at the Council on Aging, we have the uh, five wishes that we encourage people to to use, and right. to, and they can call us and come get these at, at any time, or we'll mail them to them. Um, is it important to have all things like this in the document written down, and and who do you give it to? Right. It's it's important. It is very important, and the the five wishes is a great document. Um, it's very important to to let people know that you have created one of these documents. If you if you make it, and you need to keep it in a safe place, uh, not a safe deposit box or something like that, but you need to have it in a safe place in your home, and to let the people who uh, who have you've granted these powers to, and any financial or uh, legal advisors, let them know that you've created these documents, and uh, l let them be accessible. Well, I know um, most people are very familiar with the term living will, but how does that differ from designating this health care agent? Okay. A health care agent th comes into effect when you're no longer able to make decisions for yourself. If you're incapacitated, unconscious, uh, or conscious and not thinking clearly, mm -hmm. uh, and your physician determines that, then, then your health care power of attorney takes effect. The living will takes effect when you are incapacitated, as before, but also you are either near death or in a persistent vegetative state. Okay. a terminal illness or an end-stage condition. Mm -hmm. Should someone um, give copies of these documents, say, to their physician? It's, it's very good to have your physician know your wishes beforehand, um, and then when you check into a hospital for anything, to, to take these documents with you, even if it's a common procedure, just so they're on file mm -hmm. uh, in case anything happens. Well, in your experience, um, what are some people's reservations to setting this up? Is this kind of like a approaching the end, they don't want to think about it? Is it something they don't trust the people involved, they don't want to make that decision? What stops people from planning ahead? I think, I think one common thing is fear people. You know, people don't like uh, making decisions that, that are worst case scenario decisions. Um, but obviously these, these uh, events happen every day and so it's really important to, to plan ahead for the possibility mm -hmm. uh, that they happen. Mm -hmm. Well, what if someone sets this up and they name individuals or they make known some wishes and then later they decide, well, that's not, that's not the person I really want or I've changed my mind about that medical situation and what I would want. How rigid are these? Can they be modified? Yeah. The, the great thing about these documents is they can be modified at any time. Uh, as long as the person who creates the documents is competent to make those those changes and decisions, they can be made at any time. It's important if you make those changes, uh, if you revoke or create a new document, that you tell the people that you've told about the original document so they know that your wishes have changed and they don't try to use the prior documents. Okay. Uh, before we go, what's the most common question that people ask when they come to you to set one of these up? People want to know if you know. People want to know if they're able to to make these changes. People want to know uh, who they should choose, and it's just important to really think about uh, and make sure that you trust the people that you that you put in there. It's an important document, but obviously there can be there can be problems if you don't think it through thoroughly. Just plan ahead and think it through, huh? Yes, sir. All right, thank you.